Hi, today I'm going to share with you guys this awesome symposium organized by Think at BCM. The title of the whole symposium was Therapeutics of Gene Regulation. So it's more about translational research as well as drug discovery process. The awesome part of this symposium for me was the organizer tried to uh, gather all the speakers either from academic or industrial background. So they provide information not only um, the research achievement, but also how the business runs for drug discovery biotechnology. It's awesome. Before I start the detail of the symposium, I would like to share with you um, the agenda of the whole symposium, how it was arranged, and how the speaker was gathered to each group, especially what's the title of their talk. So if you find someone more interesting, you can just go ahead to jump to that specific speaker. Um, let's start. So the first speaker is Dr. Huda Zagbi from Baylor College of Medicine. She is a superstar here. Everybody knows her. Um, so she started her talk by introducing how she started by finding a single gene mutation can cause ataxia, a type of neurodegenerative disorder. And also she comments on how her research can benefit many other polyq featured neurodegenerative, neurodegenerative um, disease. So in this type of neurodegeneration, the poly-Q protein level is critical. And the most interesting uh, part for me from her talk is that she mentioned that only 20% uh, protein level reduction can reverse the phenotype. That's awesome, right? So you only need to reduce 20% of poly-Q protein level in cells to save people's life. So in her QA section, she also comments um, uh, two, I think it's very significant comments. One is she thinks instead of target one single specific factor, um, to target multiple factor milderly, probably it's safer and more efficient. And the second comment she provides is that um, she highly recommend people to use biomarker to trace the level of polyq protein in cell. In this case, we can easily know when we can start treatment and to prevent further damage. The second speaker uh, in session one is Eric Wan from University of Florida. He's focusing on myotonic dystrophy. Consistent with Dr. Huda Zogby's comments, he also thinks that protein level or protein burden is very critical and causative factor to most of the human diseases. He actually spent most of the time during his talk trying to convince people that the RNA mis-splicing events can be quantified by using a cell-based system. And how to lower the protein burden, that's the most interesting part I found in his talk. He's actually using the deactivated Cas9 paired by guide RNA to 
um, bind to repeat version of the DNA and then block the transcription step. That's very interesting, right? Um, in this way, I mean, he can efficiently block the transcription in order um, to lower the protein burden. Next two speakers are both from the company. The first one is Sylvia. She's from H3 Biomedicine. This company is founded in 2011, now currently have um, several compounds under clinical trial. Silver's group is focusing on splicing factor, one of them called SF3B1. Actually, many mutations have been found in this protein, and they are all linked to different types of cancer. So she actually found one of the compounds in his company called H3B-8800 can efficiently bind to the mutant um, SF3B1. In this manner, the tumor cell growth can be controlled, actually um, decreased. So in her talk, she, sh she showed many evidence um, how the drug has been discovered and how the drug has been safety measured uh, to be efficient and safely. The second speaker from company is Noren. She presented her work as postdoc fellow in Merck. I found um, in her talk the most exciting part is she introduced this amazing system called Automated Ligand Identification System, referred as ALICE. So basically she is using the system to find out the interaction between different RNA and drug um, to answer two questions, basically. The first one is, what RNA sequence are druggable? druggable? And the second question is, what drug has RNA binding capability? So how robust this system is? Actually, it can test one million different RNA sequence per day. Is that amazing? So uh, similarly, Alice can also test the interaction between protein and compounds. Since Merck has um, tons of uh, compound library, actually this, this system can provide tons of raw data uh, to allow people to further dig in what can be the druggable target to cure patients. Next two speakers are CEOs. So they are running their own business. They know what the market needs, what the investor needs. So they actually provide a, a very useful information from totally different perspective. The first speaker is Michael, and he is also a superstar. He is running, he has been running five different companies. Um, he claimed that the whole ecosystem has changed. So every single researcher, you should think about how to commercialize your own uh, research data because the investor care more about valid, precise data uh, since the patients are waiting for treatment. So he also claimed that people matter because people bring ideas, but the system matters more. I mean, system is more important because um, the whole idea behind the TDI, the company he's running, is provide such a dynamic uh, system to care more about specificity, to gather different experts from different fields, to encourage people to uh, have more collaboration. In this way, the company can push the workflow to be more fast, precise, reproducible, and can be used for in the market sooner. So this is how the future research should look like. The second speaker is Casey, and he's really funny. He teach us what is burn rate, and it is actually the amount of money um, required to keep a business running. So it's difficult to run a biotechnology business because usually the um, by technology timeline is quite long. I found two sentences from his um, talk quite useful and interesting. The first one is science has to be good in sense of nature instead of correct. Mm -hmm. 
second one is as young trainee, uh, go to find a desert area, not where people already get crowded. Right? Have you done this? Next speaker is Raj, and he is from Institution of Cancer Research, London. In his talk, um, he's focusing on immunomodulatory drugs, uh, referred as amides. Actually, he showed um, several evidence just to claim that cerebrum he focused on um, is able to change the proteasum substrate um, specificity and it is able to regulate the T cell activation and also modulate um, the tumor cell growth. So I found the most interesting or useful comments he provide is different gene might have different mutation profile and some mutation are early onset um, the other might be late onset mutations. So sometimes it's important. All right, last speaker of day one is Otter. I actually felt so lucky I was there because this guy is really funny and his talk was awesome. Uh, he claimed that since the whole human genome has been sequenced and the whole research picture has become more and more complicated. And many people think protein modulation can be next frontier in research area because in many cases, the gene transcriptional um, step is hard to control. So protein interaction or stability can be accessible. Um, and he also shared the history of three drug his company got uh, work on and two of them got FDA approved. One is still pending, but very promising to get approval soon. He also shared secrets how to run a technology company successfully because his company gained 30% profits every year. That's a lot. For him, the common tips to run business um, successfully is care about early validation, especially drug discovery and external funds is critical, and you have to find the best clinical experts to ask for safety uh, test and find the best team mate and keep hard working. So the first speaker on day two is Kearney. He's from Baylor College of Medicine the new established center called Precision Environmental Health. He actually shared his work um, done on BAF protein, which is the most frequently mutated chromatin regulator found in cancer. So um, he also shared the crystal structure of the protein, as well as some mechanism he found have this protein work. Um, very importantly, if you feel interested about his topic, and he's recruiting postdoc in his lab, so just feel free to contact him if you if you feel interested. So the second speaker on day two is Paul. He's from the Institution of Cancer Research, London. Um, he spent most of his talk on exploring an inhibitor of wind signaling pathway, uh, which has quite a long name, CCT251545. So this reagent actually inhibits CDK8 and 19, and he spent a lot of time to uh, convince people that how the drug work and how the mechanism is, um, how safety it was, and potent it was. Next speaker is Louis. He's also from Institution of Cancer Research London. His topic is focused on children tumor, um, also called embryonal tumor. He claimed that it's difficult to manage and most of his patients are children. So um, the outcome of the cancer is really, really bad. So eventually he found uh, the best target driver for this cancer is MYCN. 
and he shared the pipeline how they found um, the drug target this gene through different mechanisms such as degradation and or protein protein interaction and he also shared another story he found that mic mycn and alk interaction can promote neuronal tube development as well as the tumor growth so beautiful work if you feel interested just go ahead and search to find uh, the paper he published the last speaker of the whole symposium is dr richard young from mit he is a remarkable person in this whole transcription field his talk is also very inspiring um, he started his talk by asking the question what we still don't know about transcription uh, from different level, such as transcription factor, enhancer, transcription apparatus, histone modification, DNA modification, as well as chromosome structure. So under each topic, there's still some critical question. People um, don't know the answer yet and actually need or require even more energy to explore them. So the major topic of his talk is focusing on super enhancer condensants. It's a type of uh, membraneless structure, quite similar to Peabody. He thinks this is the mechanism how the master transcription factor controls cell identity. And he also thinks it might be a very, very important mechanism to understand how signaling factor can easily, efficiently control the transcription, RNA splicing, as well as translation afterwards. So his talk, including many, many um, uh, data, actually in the whole field, he provide a leadership type of perspective for the whole field. It's very, very awesome and beautiful work. Um, I learned a lot. All right, this is all what I want to share with you about this symposium. Hopefully you will enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.